I believe that you believe that corporations are people. <laughs> so this is a this is a kind of a politically dense idea and all those kinds of things. If we just throw politics aside, if we throw all of that aside, mm -hmm. in which sense do you believe that corporations are people? So, um, and how does love connect to that? Right. So the belief is that groups of people have some kind of higher level, I would say, mesoscopic claim to agency. I, I, you know, so so where do I, you know, let's let's start with this. Most people would say, okay, individuals have claims to agency and sovereignty. Nations, we certainly act as if nations, so at a very large, large scale, nations have rights to sovereignty and agency. Like everyone plays the game of modernity as if that's true, right? We believe France is a thing. We believe the United States is a thing. But to say that groups of people at a smaller level than that, um, like a family unit is the thing. Well, in our law, in our laws, we actually do encode this concept. Uh, I believe that um, in a relationship, in a marriage, right, one partner can sue for loss of consortium, right, if someone breaks up the the marriage or, or whatever. So these are concepts that even in law, we do respect that there is something about the union and about the family. So for me, I don't think it's so weird to think that groups of people have a right to a claim to rights and, and sovereignty of some degree. I mean, we and we we uh, look at our clubs, we look at churches. These are we we talk about these collectives of people as if they have a, a real agency to them, and then they do. But I think if we take that one step further and say, okay, they can accrue resources. Well, yes, check. You know, and by law they can. Um, they can own land. They can uh, engage in contracts. They can do all these different kinds of things. So we, in legal terms, uh, support this idea that groups of people have rights. Um, where we go wrong on this stuff is that the most popular version of this is the for-profit absentee owner corporation that then is able to amass larger resources than anyone else in the landscape, anything else, any other entity of equivalent size. And they're able to essentially bully around individuals, whether it's laborers, whether it's people whose resources they want to capture. They're also able to bully around our system of representation, which is still tied to individuals, right? So um, I don't believe that's correct. I don't think it's good that they, that, you know, they're people, but they're assholes. I don't think that corporations as people acting like assholes is a good thing. But the idea that collectives and collections of people, that we should treat them philosophically as having some Agency. Some agency and some some mass um, at a mesoscopic level. I think that's an important thing because one one thing I do think we underappreciate sometimes is the fact that relationships have relationships. So it's not just individuals having relationships with each other, but if you have eight people seated around a table, right? Each person has a relationship with each of the others, and that's obvious. But then if it's four couples, each couple also has a relationship with each of the other couples. Right, the dyads do, and if it's couples, but one is the the uh, you know father and mother older, and then you know one of their children and their uh, spouse, mm -hmm. that that family unit of four has a relationship with the other family unit of four. So the idea that relationships have relationships is something that we intuitively know in navigating the social landscape, but it's not something I hear expressed like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly not something that is I think taken into account very well when we design these kinds of things. So I think. Um, the reason why I care a lot about this is because I think the future of humanity requires us to form better sense make collective sense making units at something you know around Dunbar number, you know half to five x Dunbar, and that's very different than right now where we um, defer sense making to massive aging zombie institutions, um, or we just do it ourselves. We go it alone. Go to the dark force of the internet by so, themselves. So that's really interesting. So you've you've talked about agency. I think maybe calling it a convenient fiction at all these different levels. So even at the human individual level, it's kind of a fiction. We all believe because we are, like you said, made of cells, and cells are made of atoms. So that's a useful fiction. And then there's nations. That seems to be a useful fiction, but. It seems like some fictions are better than others. You know, there's a lot of people that argue the fiction of, of nation is a bad idea. One of them lives two doors down from me, Michael Malice, he's an anarchist. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are into meditation that believe the idea 
this useful fiction of agency of an individual is uh, troublesome as well. Mm -hmm. We need to let go of that in order to truly like to transcend, I don't know, I don't know what, what words you want to use, but suffering or to, uh, to elevate the experience of life. So you're kind of arguing that, okay, so we have some of these useful fictions of agency. We should add a stronger fiction that we tell ourselves about the agency of groups in the hundreds of uh, the uh, half a Dunbar's number, five X Dunbar's number. Yeah, something on that order. And we call them fictions, but really they're rules of the game, right? Rules that we 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 feel are fair or rules that we consent to. 